Here's a really nice integral suggested by subscriber David Blau. At least that's how I understand how to pronounce his name. Apologies if I didn't get that right. Anyway, this integral is quite fascinating because it involves a little bit of everything. I mean, you have the exponential function, a damped one on this interval. You have this triggy boy in sine of x and the loggy boy, the natural logarithm of x. And the solution development is quite fascinating. I mean, it's uh, really, it's quite simple, but extremely elegant. So as usual, we're going to call the integral i. And first up, notice that we can write sine of x as the imaginary part of e to the i x using Euler's wonderful formula. So this implies that i equals the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times e to the i x times the natural log of x dx. If we multiply the two exponential functions, we get e to the, now I'm going to factor out a negative x term here, so I get e to the negative x times 1 minus i. Now the structure you have is that of the Laplace transform of the function natural logarithm of t, which is defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times ln t dt, where s is a complex number, which in this case equals 1 minus i. So this implies that i equals the imaginary part of the Laplace transform of the natural log of x and the Laplace transform is evaluated at s equals 1 minus i. Okay, cool. So our next target is to figure out a form for the Laplace transform of the function natural log t. Now there are a couple of ways to do this. One of them is rather simple. It involves substitution, a very simple substitution. It's something that flammable maths did in a past video. But I, I really don't like that technique. I'm I don't like I don't like it. I'm not comfortable with it. Why? Because uh, in that substitution, we treat s like it's a real variable, and that is pretty annoying. So I'm not going to derive the Laplace transform using that method. We're going to use a much more rigorous technique, and that is using the existing table of Laplace transforms to derive the Laplace transform of our target function. The Laplace transform from the table I'm talking about is that of the function t to the alpha, where alpha is greater than negative 1. And this is defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times t to the alpha dt. And this sorts out to the gamma function evaluated at alpha plus 1 divided by s to the alpha plus 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate this with respect to alpha, treating it as a parameter. And how will this get us any closer to the natural logarithms Laplace transform? Well, just wait and watch. Notice that we can, in fact, perform the switch up of the differentiation and the integration operators because we know that this integral converges to this gamma function stuff, this really cool stuff on the right hand side. So once we perform the switch up, we have the integral from zero to infinity and the switch up causes the total derivative with respect to alpha to become a partial one. So we're differentiating partially with respect to a e to the negative st times t to the alpha dt and this equals the derivative of uh, some stuff on the right hand side that I'm going to evaluate in a moment and notice here that for the integral on the left hand side because we're differentiating partially with respect to alpha that means the s variables and the t variables are just constants correct so uh, all we have to do is differentiate this term involving alpha as an exponent of a constant base t. So this evaluates out to t to the alpha times the natural log of t. And we see that this structure gives us the Laplace transform of the natural log of t provided that alpha equals zero. So that's our target case. So calling our integral an integral function uh, an integral function i of the parameter alpha, the integral on the left hand side, and this implies that the derivative of i with respect to alpha equals the derivative with respect to alpha of gamma of alpha plus 1 divided by s to the alpha plus 1. 
And now we have something really cool to evaluate. We have the derivative of the gamma function at alpha plus 1 times the reciprocal of s to the alpha plus 1 plus the gamma function at alpha plus 1. And now we have to differentiate with respect to alpha s to the alpha plus 1. So this is again a uh, constant base to the function of the uh, variable case. So this will evaluate out to s to the alpha plus 1. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, the reciprocal, right? The reciprocal. So you need a negative sign here. s to the negative of alpha plus 1. So s to the negative alpha plus 1 times the logarithm of the base s. Now bear in mind that s is a complex number. So we can't just write the traditional ln we use for real numbers. We're going to use the log, the, the log with base e, common in complex analysis. So this is the complex logarithm of s and because of the chain rule we have an extra negative sign as well. So uh, we're going to replace the plus sign by a negative sign. We're dividing by s to the alpha plus 1 and we're multiplying by the complex logarithm of s. In the recent video Zenaid Parker correctly pointed out that ln is more like uh, high school stuff the only log, the natural log, I'm talking about the log with base E, is the LOG log from complex analysis. So yeah, he is right about that. He is right about that. Anyway, so this is what we have. This is the derivative of I with respect to alpha. And our target case was alpha being equal to zero. So we're interested in alpha being equal to zero, and that will give us the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative st times the natural log of t dt, which we all know and love as the Laplace transform of ln t. Okay, cool. And this sorts out to the derivative of the gamma function of 1 divided by s to the 1 minus the gamma function of 1, which is in fact 1. And you have this log of s divided by s. And the derivative of the gamma function at 1 is the famous euler mascheroni constant. So you have negative gamma by s minus log s, oh, sorry about that, minus log s by s. And you can write this as, you can factor out this negative sign here. And you have gamma plus log s divided by s inside. So this here, the, the Laplace transform of the uh, logarithm of the variable t. Okay, cool. To recall our actual target integral i. And that was the imaginary part of this integral, which is in fact the Laplace transform of the logarithm evaluated at s being equal to 1 minus i. So this implies that i equals the imaginary part of uh, the negative of the imaginary part of gamma plus log 1 minus i divided by 1 minus i. And the complex logarithm evaluates to the logarithm of the modulus of the complex number, which we normally write as ln, even in complex analysis, but it's okay. Let's just avoid the confusion and do uh, and follow the more cool practice of just writing this as log. Anyway, so we have log of the modulus of 1 minus i plus i times the argument. And remember, we always take the principal branch. So we have the argument of 1 plus i. Okay, nice. And what exactly is the argument here? That's the inverse tangent of negative 1 by 1, right? Which is uh, negative pi by 4. Okay, cool. So this implies that i equals the negative of the imaginary part of gamma plus log square root 2, right? Uh, minus i times pi by 4 divided by 1 minus i. And we can expand the denominator using the conjugate. So we have gamma plus log square root 2 minus i times pi by 4 uh, times the reciprocal of 1 minus i that we're going to expand using the, uh, the conjugate. So we have a 1 plus i term here. 1 squared minus i squared, and i squared is negative 1, so two negatives give you a positive. You got positive 1 down here. So you have this uh, 1 plus i by 2 term. 
And now we need to cherry pick the imaginary part from this to get our target integral. So uh, just multiplying everything by the uh, i plus 2, uh, i by 2 term here, we get uh, negative 1 half of gamma plus log square root 2 and a, a positive, uh, a negative pi by 4 term here as well. Okay, nice. So there you have it. That's our integral of pretty much everything. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.